Hi everyone, I'm Mike and this is the Sunday Art Show. In this week's video I've got two watercolour line and wash demonstrations to show you and they're going to be very different subjects. The first one, which is in progress on screen at the moment, is a cartoon fantasy creature. I'll explain a little bit more about the story behind this image in just a little bit. And then the second one is an everyday scene. And the main idea of the video is to show you that you can use exactly the same materials and very similar techniques to, to create two very different effects and deal with two very different subjects. So if you've been watching the show for a little while now, you'll know that in general, the videos I create and the paintings I create, uh, at least the ones I've shown on the channel, predominantly focus on my, if you want, if my fine art. Um, so my animal paintings, my portrait paintings, my landscapes, and I do throw in you know, the odd touch of um, surreal as well. But what I'm doing for the first painting today is creating a cartoon and cartoons. I've, you know, I've painted cartoons for you know, years and years now, and it's an aspect of my art that I really love. Um, to my mind, they're just as valid as my other types of art. They're just as much fun and they bring me just as much joy as well. So the cartoons can be inspired by a number of different things. It might be somebody who owns a bike shop who wants um, a design for inside the shop. It might be that I'm waiting for somebody in town and then all of a sudden around the corner of a building zips a young girl on a micro scooter. Or it might be somebody I see walking a dog and as they're walking their dog, they're bouncing along on these kind of, I think they're called kangaroo boots. It's kind of a, a, a boot with a spring device underneath each. So as you walk, you kind of bounce along. So whatever the inspiration is, it's something I really enjoy doing. You know, sometimes it might be some rock and roll dancers or something like that. But other times it'll be a complete fantasy scene. So uh, a few years ago, I painted some fantasy animal paintings for my young nephews, um, and they were really good fun to do. But this particular image, as you can see, is a little bit of a unique creation uh, because we've got an elephant's head bonded to a fish body. So yeah, what, what we call that, I haven't quite decided whether it's an Ella fish or a cross between uh, a mermaid and, and an elephant. So it's a merfant, I don't know. But the idea came to me in all places um, in a mathematics lesson I was giving. And without going into too much detail, I was basically trying to illustrate the point that although you can follow a logical process to make a deduction in maths, sometimes you just have to accept that you might have to take something from one part of your knowledge and combine it with something else from a very different part of your knowledge and combine the two things. So, and I made the, the quick analogy that, you know, you may be familiar with an elephant, you may be familiar with a fish, but sometimes you're going to come across something which is a cross between the two. And I did a, just a 10 second outline sketch of an elephant's head on a fish body on the whiteboard during the lesson. And it got quite a reaction from, from the students. Um, so I thought, well, I'll have a bit of fun and I'll create a full color version of this. Now that said, although this image is you know, completely fantastical and completely from my imagination, I like to create a little bit of a world for these creatures to occupy. So here I thought to myself, well, in this weird and warped and twisted world, uh, if there was such a thing, if there was such a creature, what would it eat underwater? So I thought, well, you know, a lot of ocean liners and cruise ships um, and people will sometimes, you know, throw waste food over the over the side of the ship and uh, what better food for an elephant bonded to a fish body than, you know, iced ring donuts that people have discarded over the side of a ship. And as they sink down to the bottom of the ocean, this elephant fish comes along and uh, grabs them. It seems like a per perfectly natural logic to me. So as I've been chatting away, I've taken uh, my watercolours and added lots of different colours to this painting, as you can see. So I'm working with the usual mixed media paper. This is just A4 in size. And my initial drawing was created with a Unipin ink marker. 
And then what I've done is added these watercolour washes wet in wet in the background. So and I've added a combination of colours. So I've put down a blue initially and then added some purple and green afterwards and let all of those colours, all of those background colours mingle and mix to give me, you know, the wonderful patterning and cauliflowers and lovely shapes and edges that you can really only get in watercolour using that method. And then having let that dry for the most part, I did a similar technique, but less watery on the body of the fantasy elephant fish creature. But what I'm doing now is just coming in and filling in this little fish in the corner in a much, much simpler colour scheme, about as simple as you could get, just a simple wash of green. And the idea is that this little fish is swimming past with a rather quizzical, perhaps less than impressed look at this weird creature that's that's going in the other direction. Now, in terms of all of the scales on the fish body, I've deliberately let the colours wander across the lines I've drawn so that it's not just scale, 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 carefully painted. There's more of a sort of organic flow of colours. And then I filled in the odd scale here and there more carefully as well to add a little bit of variety in the way the scales are depicted. Now, when it comes to the donuts top left, again, I'm taking a fairly simple approach. So if you've seen some of my conventional videos, if I was painting cattle or sheep in a landscape, what I might do is paint the background in a fairly simplified way and then perhaps some of the other animals in a fairly simplified way. And then the main focus of the painting, perhaps the sheep in the foreground, I would do in more detail and you know, with different textures. So it's a similar technique here, even though the subject matter and the finished look is going to be very, very different. But the, the water is painted very, very loosely. The fish bottom right and the donuts top left are painted carefully, but very simply. And then the, the main character, the, the, the mutant elephant fish, is painted more elaborately and with more detailed line work. So even within a cartoon, the skill set and the techniques that you use or that I use in conventional art, they're, you know, they're very, very transferable. I also think that doing this cartoon work and just being willing to play and explore you know, the imagination and not being worried about being silly and having to seem sort of too serious with one's art. I think that's actually really important in terms of being creative as well, because if you get, I, be, I believe, if you get too fixed in, in doing just one subject in one particular way, then that's great. But, you know, you're obviously training yourself to behave in a very um, linear and in a narrow way and that often brings technical excellence but that's not just what I want to, do, to achieve in my art I also want to kind of explore different ideas and have fun and you know create different emotions in paintings and you know different looks and different worlds and you know just sort of step outside of reality a little bit as well so definitely a sense of escapism in pretty much all the paintings I create now the initial wash I put down uh, on the elephant head I felt was a little too light. It was a pale grey wash. So I'm just coming in with a dilute wash of Payne's grey now. And um, that's gone on a little bit dark to be honest with you. So what I'll do is I'll just, using the water brush, I can just add more water and spread out that little patch of colour. And because this is a fantasy creature, you know, there are no rules. So, you know, nobody can tell me, you know, that elephant's head is the wrong colour because, because this thing doesn't exist. And so, again, that kind of plays into my more conventional work, because let's say I painted the elephant's head pink in this particular example. Let's say I'd chosen to do that. Or perhaps that's even quite conventional. You see quite a few pink elephants in cartoons. But perhaps, you know, I painted it purple with, you know, yellow circles on it or something like that. A little element of that choice might then inform you know, my more conventional art. 
So I, I feel when we're exploring new ideas or trying to find a style or, you know, really just educating ourselves in terms of how to paint and, and working out what works and what doesn't. Cartoons are brilliant for that because and watercolour as well, because watercolour does its, does its own thing anyway, if you use it in a dilute fashion. And, um, you know, fantasy has no rules beyond the ones you impose. So what I'm doing here is adding a little bit of that grey wash to the tail and the body of the fish. So although, you know, I'm being free with my colours, the idea is to have a little bit of coherence within the drawing and the painting, you know, just a bit. And now having done that, what I just added to the belly was a light wash of purple. I'm doing something similar to the underside of the trunk with a view to creating just a gentle sense of three dimensions. So, you know, I'm not looking to you know, make this thing really pop out in 3D, but just, you know, hinting at, you know, there is some kind of light falling on the animal from above. And then onto the tusks, which at the moment just have a little wash of yellow on. I'm just adding a bit of a uh, burnt sienna wash there to add, add a little bit of shadow onto those. Now that the paint's dry, I can come back in with my Unipin marker pen and I can enhance the, the line work and add to the line work where I feel necessary. So again, this is a technique I use in my fine art. Often what I'll do is I'll put down the initial uh, line work, usually with a brush, but sometimes with a watercolour marker. Actually, I say usually with a brush. I think I use the watercolour marker more often than, than the brush in my conventional work. I'll do the painting and then towards the end, I'll often add some extra line work or drawing with the brush. So I like alternating between those two. And I really enjoy doing the same thing with the cartoons as well, albeit in this case with, with different media. But even if I'm doing a line and wash watercolour painting of a cow, I'll use this alternating drawing painting drawing technique. So as well as enhancing the lines I've already got, I can add a little bit of texture like I have on the underside of the trunk there. Some little contour lines at the end of the trunk. So anything I feel is going to add a little bit of visual interest or a little sense of character to the creature that I'm depicting here. So I just checked with my finger there. It's all you, you can see the top of the elephant's head is still quite damp. There's quite a pool of water there, but I'm fairly impatient sometimes. So I just want to kind of get into the drawing bit. And so I was just checking with my finger that the paint is fully dry, because obviously if you try to draw with the ink through a damp patch, you've got a danger of um, either clogging your pen nib or just ripping the, the paper, which obviously I don't want to do. So one of the things I'm being quite careful of here is I'm only adding as much extra dark line as I feel is necessary. So I'll show you the finished version of that painting uh, at the end of the video. But here's the, the other one I'm doing for this video. And so this is a sketch uh, inspired by a time I was up at my dad's. Uh, he was just loading the dishwasher or unloading it, I can't remember, in the kitchen. And I just did the line sketch quickly while we were chatting away. Um, and it's not a great depiction of him or, or his kitchen, really, but it's just a, you know, a quick summary of what was going on there. And then this is now several weeks later. And I've uh, and just before I carry on, notice on the kettle there, I've added some red and I just accidentally smudged that and tried to wipe it away with my finger. But I'm going to incorporate that red smudge into the finished 
uh, painting later, so I'll come back to that. Um, but yes, having done the line drawing a few weeks ago, I thought I kind of discovered it in my sketchbook, tucked away, having um, just started or having just finished the elephant fish. I thought, oh, well, you know, I've got my watercolours out. I'll, I'll add some colour to this for some fun. So I'm taking a, a more illustrative approach with this one. So I put in a wash of yellow for the background. You just saw me add some quite controlled patches of colour uh, on the kettle there. Now I've coloured in his jacket and just adding some darker tone to that. Bit of blue for the jumper. A simple wash in for the trousers, a bit of shadow under that open drawer and for the top of the dishwasher as well. A little bit of colour coming in on the cups. And then so you know, none of this uh, is in front of me as I'm colouring it in. I'm not working from a reference photo or anything. So, you know, some of it's coming from memory. Some of it's sort of me thinking, you know, what's going to work for this particular drawing. So I know that his uh, saucepans, for example, have dark handles and dark uh, little knobs on top of the saucepan lid. And then the, the actual saucepan itself is, you know, a silvered finish or mirror finish. So I've added a patch of red on the left of that saucepan because there's some red of the kettle so maybe some of that colour is reflected in the saucepan and then some dark green on the right hand side of the saucepan depicting a partial reflection of his jacket. I've just added a sweep of a greeny blue in the glass of the cooker door as well and there are some sweeps of a reddish colour as well and then I just added some blues onto the, the side of the dishwasher there more or less for a bit of fun really. A bit of dark purple shadow coming in here um, because that's a shadow colour I just like to use. And then the floor isn't the colour I'm depicting here, but maybe there are some tiles on the floor which I've included there. Adding some colour to the hands. So the key here is, in contrast to the, the elephant fish one, is I'm doing it in a more controlled way and just thinking, well, what would be going on? Whereas with the elephant fish, I just kind of let the watercolour decide for the most part. I could have taken that approach for this subject, but I just wanted to highlight in this video, you know, you can use the same materials, but with different subjects and just a slightly different approach, you can, you know, get quite a different effect, really. So here are the finished paintings. Here's the finished fantasy cartoon. We've got our elephant fish and you can see I've added a little bit more line work and a little bit of darker shadow in, in places with that purple wash. But for the most part, it's fairly similar to what I showed you in the video. A couple of other key things to note is I did add some scales, just a few, along the trunk, ears and head of the elephant to make it more of a coherent whole, you know, to try, you know, because obviously it's a nonsense, but um, it's, I still like the idea of making it seem as though this elephant fish could exist. And then I added some chocolate sprinkles to the lower donut. And that was done for two reasons. One, in part to uh, cover up a couple of areas where the, the background wash had come into the, the, you know, gone over the edge of the donut. And I'd um, failed to wipe that wash away quickly enough. And also just to distinguish one donut from the other. And then I added a few bubbles and a little bit of plant life. Not much, but just in the background. And then for the line and wash drawing of my dad in the kitchen. I added a few more. Once the once those washes I showed you had dried, that was pretty much all I did in terms of paint. But I just came in and drew some more details on top, added some taps to the sink on the right hand side, added some cupboards on the wall, a switch on the wall, some cutlery and pots. Um, and, you know, I even put some dials on the, the cooker hob and noticed the three on the right are in the vertical position but the one on the left is angled because we've got some steam coming out of the saucepan so at least one of those had to be turned on so just having some fun really adding some little details here and there and uh, yeah that's pretty much it for this video hope you enjoyed watching these two very different paintings come to life thanks very much for watching hope to see you next week please remember to like comment and subscribe